How much paint did this take again? It was over a hundred gallons, uh, latex. It was monumental. How much do your color palettes vary? Because when I look at this, I'm like, man, some bright colors. Reminds me of, uh, you know, neon and sherbet. It looks sort of edible. Yeah. Reminds me of like candies. To me, it does anyways. Video portraits of American trendsetters. 10 cities across the country, five episodes in each city. This week, large scale murals and community activism with North End Studios. So, yeah, this is the new North End Studios. Okay your brushes here and you've got your repurposed container that you're using to mix paints I yeah. assume that's what's happening my recyclable containers this is like found wood too like I find a lot of these pieces and then by taking like just found wood and like assembling it it's kind of like assemblage I'm influenced by like street art, you know, and I have a lot of influence from the, you know, post-industrial stage that Detroit's in right now and the scene here and stuff. So just taking that and then filtering it through me as an artist. I use a lot of alchemy in my work, actually. Like I, I mix different colors, I dye fabric. I'm really into just like the qualities of paint and like the phenomenon of paint too. It's really from a place of inhabiting space, you know, and like creating my own world. What was the reaction when you completed the piece? What, what did people say? Oh my gosh, I got such a positive reaction. People loved it. We'd get tons of photographers stopping all the time to take photos. I've seen people get married in front of the piece. Where we're at right now is not the original North End Studios. Give me more of that story of how you ended up moving to this space. We used to be on the boulevard where the illuminated mural was, but the building was actually purchased by a paintball company. This is clean because we took most of the stuff out of here. Cleaned a lot of this up, actually. They didn't want to actually keep the mural. The, the owner of the building at the time didn't really mention much about the tenants that were here. Really, really upset them that we were going to get rid of the mural. We didn't understand yeah, it absolutely. was a mural and who did it. Yeah. Right. We just knew there was paint on the walls. For two years we spent working on this painting and they just really didn't understand, I guess, like how monumental it was. But we ended up, you know, convincing them to keep the painting. Once we found out people want it there and care about it, that's, you know, that's cool. We're not against the artist community, but just a few things around here that should not have been painted. I know this is the North End, but in order for Detroit to get revenue, it has to go. You have all these post-industrial buildings, these buildings that once were factories, it becomes a sort of frontier for experimental art and creative thinkers, people that work big, people that need space. We're creating this like sort of internal community and an internal economy too, like with the artists and the shows and events and stuff that we were having. And these pieces are gonna be a part of a house installation on a burnt out house in Southwest where there's like boards and stuff on the windows. I'm gonna be putting like different boards that I've painted. To me, it's more of like a artistic opportunity for me to like turn it into something that is like healing or uplifting for the community. So I think that's what's important. Any way you want to get into it, they're kind of like Legos, you know, or like blocks. You want to try? Okay, go for it. So there's the glue. You just set it. See, we're trying to make these pyramids. Even if somebody wants to kind of squeeze them together a little bit too, make sure they stay stuck. 
we would get like a lot of really great artists coming here and doing these amazing pieces and then kids would come the next day and just kind of scribble them out and do whatever because there wasn't really enough space, you know. So we started to build the permission walls so that they can just paint and practice so that we can start to maybe keep some of these pieces and cherish them. How does it feel to spend all this time pouring all this effort into these pieces of work knowing that at any point someone can come in and buy like 10 of these houses and go, I'm gonna tear them all down. How do you deal with the, the impermanence? I think I've just evolved into a natural place where I'm comfortable with it not existing forever, you know, like with things being alive and then dying and coming back to life again. And nothing really can last forever outdoors anyway, so like why not just embrace it? That becomes a whole other commentary, I think, about the type of environment that I live in. I'm proud of being from Detroit and by you know putting my piece on this house I'm gonna be transforming it into a piece of artwork you know rather than just like a burnt out house in the neighborhood. Next week in Detroit, raw vegan pop-up dinners at historical locations with chartreuse. What do you think about the episode? What do you think about community leadership, saving the children? What do you think about graffiti, renegade art, murals, color palettes? Let us know what you think of the episode. Click on a link, leave us a comment. I'm just gonna kick it, hydrate, drink some more of this yellow number five. I'll see all of you beautiful people next episode.